I glanced around my shop and sighed with satisfaction. Every surface gleamed and all the items were in their place. I hated adding new inventory without first organizing everything that was already there. After putting away my duster, I went to the back room and began unpacking one of the boxes that had just arrived. I'd worked my ass off to open something special. My dad had helped with the logistics and co-signed the lease, but every dime had come from me. It had always been an eclectic selection of items, from books to antiques to custom jewelry and furniture, as well as other trinkets. After that fateful night, I still carried a similar variety, but my tastes had darkened, and my merchandise leaned more toward the occult now. A lot of my customers were real witches and other magical creatures who all shopped at something wicked, the name I changed it to after the incident on Halloween 20 years ago. Since I was the only person who carried what they needed or knew where to order it, there were also a good number of hopefuls who often came here for the books and ingredients to make potions, cast spells, and whatever other magical things they came up with. I was happy to help and encourage, but I made sure to be honest when they asked about the likelihood of their success in their magical endeavors. Unless they already possessed magical powers, I doubted they would achieve their goal, but there was no harm in trying. Then there were all the visitors who came to Screaming Woods just to visit the store owned by the Wicked Witch of the West. It was a pain in the ass since the whole story was trumped up and full of half-truths and outright lies. But it wasn't like anyone would believe me if I tried to correct the record. And these gawkers usually spent obscene amounts of money to take home souvenirs from the Wicked Collection owned by the Green Witch. I generally wisecracked and played it all off as funny, but there were days I wished I'd dropped that house on my cousin Lindsay, especially when I had another disastrous date, because I desperately wanted to find someone to help me get a certain horseman out of my heart. Many of them couldn't stop staring at my bright green skin. Some were there just to ask ridiculous questions about that little thief and her yappy dog. Others were curious about my shoe collection, it was no secret that I loved unusual, bright, funky shoes. Those were the ones who usually had some kind of shoe fetish. My brother thought I was crazy for going on all these dates, particularly since I got them through a dating website. I'd had one earlier tonight that had gotten on my nerves enough that I lost my cool just a bit. Inventory wasn't taking my mind off it, so I grabbed my cell phone and flopped down in an old but well-preserved red velvet chair and dialed my brother's number.